Uh, Paul, let's let's talk about Lindsey Graham, the development on, on his subpoena today. And just to get people up to speed here, this is, of course, the case out of Fulton County, Georgia, um, which is in some ways kind of a wild card because that you know, that is not under the Department of Justice. There's no guidance there uh, like there is the Department of Justice about when you can and can't make big moves in cases and so so on and so forth. Graham has been subpoenaed because we know that he was calling Brad Raffensperger, the secretary of state, uh, to, to to press him on the standards for signature matching, uh, among other things. Um, he's been subpoenaed and he's tried to get out of it by saying this is constitutionally protected, I guess, under the speech and debate clause as a member of Congress. Right. That's I think that's the, the, the argument he's making uh, so far. I don't think it's worked. Right. He's lost on that. So he's appealed to the Supreme Court. So what where are we with that? So, Chris, Senator Graham is arguing that his efforts to promote the big lie in Georgia are protected uh, by the speech and debate clause of the Constitution. And so far, a trial judge has told him that's wrong. And then a unanimous decision from the very conservative 11th Circuit Appeals Court told him that that's wrong. And, and now Senator Graham has gone to Trump's best friend on the Supreme Court, uh, hoping that Justice Clarence Thomas will cut him a break. That's not likely to happen because Lindsey Graham isn't giving them a legal argument to work with. His calls to try to hustle Georgia election officials to hand Trump the election are not the kind of legislative activity that the Constitution protects. Right. And so just to be just for folks that don't remember, the speech and debate clause does protect speech of members of Congress in their legislative duties. Right. Like you can't, for instance, uh, be sued for defamation, I believe, or other. You're, you're sort of civil, civilly indemnified from anything you say on the floor, particularly. I mean, I think that's how it was imagined. But he's trying to extend this out to like his conversations with Raffensperger or anything else he was doing down there. Yeah, and again, all courts so far have rejected that. Again, when you're calling people trying to overturn an election, that's not what you're supposed to do as a senator. And so, therefore, it's just not part of his legislative conduct. There are good reasons that senators and Congress people shouldn't be questioned about their legislative activities. Yep. But this kind of criminal activity, fake elector scheme, trying to overturn a legitimate election, None of that counts as protected conduct. 